prayer time. I apologize for running a few moments late this morning. Uh, one of the missionaries broke down in Louisville, Kentucky and been trying to get some help. So I called Brother Robert to take things, open it up, and I appreciate him doing that. This morning, we'll continue our study and series that we've been doing and uh, covering individuals and the story of my life according to the Bible. We've covered numerous of them and uh, I'm not sure how many more we'll cover, but I'm gonna go to the Old Testament. We'll go to the book of Ruth chapter number four and uh, we'll look the first time the name is mentioned in the scriptures and then we will move on toward first and second samuel where most of their life exploits are recorded in the divine book of the bible so as we consider uh, the book of ruth and we'll look at chapter number four and verse number 17 and their name is first mentioned in genealogy and so we'll pick up in verse number 17 and the woman and her neighbors gave it a name saying there is a son born unto naomi and they called his name obed and he is the father of Jesse, the father of David. And so this morning I would like to look at David. He is one that certainly we could spend days on uh, concerning his life in the scripture, but this is the first time his name is mentioned in the Bible and in the word of God. As we consider this, um, his name may have showed up in a genealogy first time in the Old Testament and shows up the first time in the New Testament in genealogy as well. But I am excited about David and some of the things that God allowed him to accomplish. And I believe that there are things that you and I can accomplish in our life that God would use for his glory and honor and would astound the world. I want to just mention a couple of things about him before we begin to do a brief summary on the scripture this morning. And David is one of those we're going to have a really hard time in about 10 minutes trying to squeeze in a summary of his life. His name is found 968 times in the Bible, the word of God. And if you study and look at it, uh, we find that 459 times it's mentioned in 1st and 2nd Samuel. Again, those are the two books that record the majority of his work. And uh, we're grateful for all that the Lord has given to us concerning David. Now, in the book of Revelation, chapter number 22, we've not done this on the others, but in Revelation, chapter number 22, we'll make a brief a read of the passage of Scripture, and then notice in verse number 16, we have David's name mentioned in the latter part of the Scripture. As we begin to look at it, we'd find that uh, the Bible deals with uh, Jesus. In verse number 16, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you in these things in the churches and the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. And so we find that his name is mentioned in the book of Ruth, chapter number four, in the opening text of the Bible, or the opening uh, book of the Bible, uh, in the book of Ruth, I should say, not Genesis, the beginnings, but that's where he's found in the first time in the first book of the scriptures. And then he is found in the closing book of the Bible. As we consider David, there are several things I'd like to mention. <laughs> Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter number 16, if you would, and we'll read a brief passage of scripture that I believe will set the pace for David's life. In 1 Samuel chapter number 16 and verse number 13, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed, anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the spirit of uh, the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went from Ramah. And so we find other than the genealogy where he's mentioned in the book of Ruth, and it's found two times actually in the book of Ruth, but we find in the opening introduction of David and his earthly ministry that uh, he has been associated with the anointing of the Spirit of God. And this is going to carry with him throughout his entire uh, life and his ministry, administration, and God's going to use him in a great way. David was king of Judah and of Israel. He's one of the most significant people in the entire Bible as far as a leader and God's hand being upon him. He was a man, the Bible attributes in the New Testament, as a man after God's own heart. His reign shaped the nation of Israel and uh, his history and his work and acts, as I said, already pretty much covers throughout all the book of First and Second Samuel. Uh, he was born in an obscure family, and yet God had his hand upon him. Uh, he was able to learn uh, various traits that God would use in his life. Same with you and I. Before salvation, our traits, our skills, our work, our life, our environment, and uh, everything is shaped uh, by our character and our integrity. It shapes it as we grow up, and God uses that for his glory and honor. And certainly it was no different with David. He was a shepherd boy. And uh, he learned two specific traits that God would use uh, in a substantial way throughout his life. Uh, first, he learned music. Uh, David uh, played the harp and uh, he was a singer, wrote the songs, the songs. And uh, God would use that in his earthly life and administration. Even at one point when Saul uh, was oppressed, uh, we find that he called for a musician and singers at the council of his 
uh, closest uh, friends in his administration, and they recommended David to come before his court. And so God would use him in that fashion. And God will use mine and your uh, talents and gifts we have, many of them that we learned even in our youth that God will use today. Then we find that also David learned fighting skills as a, a young man. He didn't fight against uh, warriors, but he fought against bears and lions, the Bible said. And with his bare hands, as they come out after the sheep, as he was a shepherd and had the responsibility to take care of the sheep, uh, he was willing to put his life on the line. And uh, he learned two important traits and skills as a young man. He learned music that God would use in a great way. And then also he learned some skills as far as uh, that would allow him to be battle hardened on the battlefield. His life suddenly changed in our text where uh, Samuel comes along and anoints him to be king over Israel. He is the least expected of the family of, Jay, of Jesse and of all his brothers. In fact, Jesse had brought all of them before Samuel and uh, he was unimpressed with all of them. Even the one that Jesse, been the father, knew each individual, brought the best before Samuel and it ended up being the little ruddy faced boy, David, that God would use to anoint him to become the king of Israel. Uh, we find that his interaction with Saul, of course, came when he killed the giant Goliath. Uh, the direction of his dad sent him down to the battlefield uh, for his brothers. And as he got there, he healed, hears in the providence of God. At that very moment, that very instant, Goliath comes on the scene. He disdains God. Uh, he ridicules God. He ridicules Israel. And uh, David, of course, steps up with great faith in God and goes out to battle. Saul was the most given one that should have went out to battle, head and shoulders above all men. He was a skilled warrior. He was a king, and yet he would not go out to fight against Goliath. And David steps up and says to Goliath that he'll have his carcass and the fowls of the air will eat his carcass. And of course, we know the story without getting into it, how that God gave him great victory. As they go back to the uh, household of Israel, the women begin to dance and sing in the streets that Saul has through his thousands and David his tens of thousands. And at that moment, jealousy sets in and enrages uh, Saul. And from that day forward, Saul sets his heart against David. He tries to kill him with his own personal javel. And we find that uh, there were several attempts on David's life as he took soldiers and his military and some of his strongest men and mightiest warriors to go out against David and God always allowed him to have favor and to escape. We find that uh, there was a fight and uh, Ziglag and Saul and the Israelites were uh, defeated in the battle at Mount Gilboa and we find that uh, eventually that Saul and Jonathan uh, were killed in battle uh, Jonathan became the closest friend and ally of, of David. And of course, it became uh, bosom buddies, if you please. They were uh, in deep friendship. And uh, when he was killed, we find that when all of this was said and done, eventually he became the king of Judah. And then seven years or so later, uh, the king of Israel would die. Then David would step up and become the king of Israel, reigning seven years over Judah. And then also he'd reign for 33 years uh, over Israel and the 40 year reign of David. The Bible is very clear concerning his accomplishments and David was a man of war. David wanted to build the tabernacle or the temple and uh, God would not allow him to do it because he was a man of war. And uh, so God says to him that he would allow his son Solomon to build the temple. And so David gathered all the construction materials together. And uh, I almost want to look at it this way, uh, but along, and it's not in detail like we think of it today, but it's almost like David prefab the temple and Solomon came along and erected it and built it. And I know they had to have hearers of wood and, uh, but, you know, different uh, uh, people that were involved in construction and, and gold and so forth. And I understand that, but we find that David gathered all the materials together. And a good thing he didn't live in the day and age we live. You can't even find materials hardly anymore. But to God in the providence, his providence allowed him to gather it all together. And of course, uh, pass it on to uh, Solomon. Now, as we consider the life of David, and I apologize running through this so fast and not been able to really park. I'm trying to just take one individual a day, and there's so much with some of these that we really can't just get into it. Again, uh, 960 something times that his name is mentioned in the Bible. So there's a lot on the life of David. But as we consider David, uh, one of his greatest years 
uh, came about in the greatest tragedies of his life as well uh, when he sinned with Bathsheba. Everyone's aware of that. Thank God for his greatest accomplishment. One of the greatest accomplishments is his killing of the giant Goliath. Almost everyone knows about that, even the children in our society and our churches especially. And then one of the greatest sins, uh, two main ones that David uh, committed in his life. One was the sin of Bathsheba, uh, the murder of her husband, Uriah the Hittite. And then also he uh, put a census out among Israel that God had very clearly commanded him not to do. And so there's two major sins and transgressions that is recorded in the scripture concerning David, the man of God. And uh, yet he was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. And after committing sin with Bathsheba, it shows once again, as we've said with many of these we looked at, it shows the depth of the grace of God. Because in spite of his sin, in spite of his adultery, and in spite of his rebellion against God on these two specific occasions in his life, God used him because David was a man after God's own heart. And in spite of his failures, God used him to accomplish great things. And the Bible refers to uh, David as David uh, in the scripture as a mighty warrior. Uh, he was a man after God's own heart. But I believe one of the greatest attributes of David or things that are attributed to David is the fact that David was a man that loved God and in spite of his failures, he was able to overcome the hurdles and go forward to continue to do great things for God. You know, we live in a day and age, and I'm not talking about things that disqualify an individual from ministry or certain uh, categories of service for the Lord. I'm not referring to those uh, this morning, but a lot of people are discouraged. I just heard of someone yesterday that is a uh, very discouraged within the ministry. And then another uh, pastor that we spoke with that is dealing with depression and oppression and various uh, things that they're going through. And you know what I found in my personal life? And I believe when we read the scriptures, the Psalms, and uh, all the life story of David, I believe David struggled with a lot of things that you and I struggle with today. Or maybe I have that backwards. Maybe we struggle with a lot of things David struggled with in his life. I believe David sometimes uh, had to live with his guilt. I know he did. We have a Psalm 51, the a prayer of repentance, and a song that he wrote concerning the depth of his sin. Sometimes David... Uh, struggle with family issues and we struggle with family issues sometimes there's conflicts within families we find that sometimes there's rejection david battled with rejection in his administration sometimes there's great victories such as his battle with goliath and uh, he's on cloud nine as the old saying goes and he's gone through the emotions of life and all the battles that are there but can i say to you we go through the same things and I want you to know that if God could use David in spite of all that he went through and all of his feelings and his emotions and his sin, his, uh, his strengths, his weaknesses and all that he did, God can use you and I. Lift up your head, child of God. The, our redemption draweth nigh. Yeah. The Lord is nigh. He is soon to return. And thank God he'll call us out of this vile, wicked, sinful world and we'll be gone. Look up. Our redemption draweth nigh. Yeah. And when we get to the end of the Bible, and the very closing book of the Bible, God speaks of the scripture in the scriptures concerning David. And he's dealing with salvation, drawing men Amen. unto the Lord. You know, that's what we're to be about. Yes. Uh, and unto him that is able to keep us from falling. And I've been studying that scripture for quite some time. I've been a little bit hesitant. The Lord hasn't given me liberty to preach on that topic matter. But you know, the Bible in that text gives the recipe to keep the child of God on track and to not fall into sin and to fall under transgression, the Bible is very clear about it. The Bible says that he'll not allow us to be tempted but that which he'll not make a way for us to escape. Look up, my friend. God's on the throne. Hey. And God yes. will see us through in spite of our sins yes. and our failures. May I just say to you, in very quick summary this morning, David was a man after God's own heart. God used his upbringing, his skills and talents and ability as a musician, and also as one who would learn skills of uh, war and killing and so forth as a young man. And God would use those and bring them right into the administration of his life. And it is referred to in the scripture as the son of David and the lineage and the heritage of David. Think about it, David in the lineage and the heritage. We think about Rahab the harlot been in the lineage of Christ. We spoke of that the other day. But what about David, this murderer? David, this uh, adulterer? David, this sinful man that um, though he had great feats in his life, still he is one that sinned and failed God miserably. And yet he is called 
uh, we go through it. He is called in the genealogy of Christ, the son of David, the son of God, the lineage of Christ. Thank God that in spite of ourselves, we can still be used of God. Now I understand there's disqualifications. I'm not referring to those, but the average child of God gets defeated over nothing. That's yeah. right, yeah. Yeah. We live in a day and age where it's not persecution, my friend, that's destroying yes. preachers in our generation. It's discouragement. Yes. It's, and it causes despondency. And uh, sometimes I believe people that are under persecution, they fare better because they know very clearly where their enemy is. They're external and they can bear arms. But when it's internally, what do you bear arms against the mind of the heart and the soul? Yeah. Other than scripture and the word of God. So we learned from David many valuable traits. My time's going. I apologize. I had to rush through this this morning, and I've had to on many of them. But David's just one of those that is power-packed, and there's so much between the lines that uh, should be said and filled in. But I thank God for David. I just want to remind you, all of these people we've been looking at in the Scripture, they had certain character traits that God used, and God zeroed in, and God magnified them, and God lift up uh, the man for God's glory and God's honor. Not for the glory and honor of the man, but for God's honor and God's glory. And if God does anything through you and I that's accomplished for his glory and any victories, it's because of him and not because of us. Brother Steve, give us a quick course. Page 728, we'll do the first verse. So I want to see. As I journey through the land, sing as I go, for drinking souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on, through him I must win. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Here's all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. God bless you. Let's get about our business today. Amen.